person who showed us to our seats was the same person as four years ago when I came with Eleanor. Did she remember me? I did not know, but there were several points where I felt like I might lose my perception of time. As I was with my memories of four years ago, eight years ago, and the present blended into a mess, the anchor that kept me properly tied to reality was Hagana's hand. That hand held all of my experiences until now. This way. Then, we stood before the root cause to everything. Feels like an eternity, doesn't it? Indeed. In actuality, it would be eight years now. But as I am now, I feel like I've turned into a bad guy, you know? Bart was sitting leisurely on the sofa with an intimidating smile on his face. After glancing at Hagana and me, as though appraising us, he spoke. Well, have a seat. Hagana and I sat in chairs. And I asked the waitress to bring two coffees. Are you going to give up on Emerald Industries? This was my way of breaking the ice. Straight to the point, huh? I thought you were a monster. You don't stick to a plan that was carried out over the course of several years. I guess you would say you're a limit on when to back out, right? But even so, such decisiveness is beyond normal. How can you so easily renounce something you have built? Martin looked at me before glancing at the coffee in his hand. I wonder, could it be because what you want, deep down, isn't the acquisition of Emerald Industries itself? In my words, as Bart was about to pour coffee in his mouth, he directed his sharp gaze toward Agana. So you told him. You never told me not to talk about it. That's true. Bart sipped his coffee and then put down his cup. He interlaced his fingers over his belly before heaving a sigh. The situation with the lunar surface is worse than I expected. People obeying their greed made a bet lost. Right now, the lunar surface is about to be drowned out in the depths of that greed. By the way, if you define greed as taking any risk in order to reach your objectives, the greediest people in the world are right here, if you ask me. Barton probably caught on to Agana's behavior at some point. Maybe during the negotiations with Emerald Industries. But Agana did not falter in the slightest. She kept sitting in the chair, her expression composed. As I am right now, I have immense funds, but this does not allow me to do whatever I want. I must think about how to use it. Next time, are you going to create an artificial island in the middle of the Pacific Ocean? That would be nice. After all, the lunar surface is quite far from Earth. Exchange during the shallow spot of the conversation. Martin was the first to make a move. So, what did you come to talk about? I hope you're not counting on my money. Actually, I am. I spoke. Martin laughed. There was no sound to it at first, just his shoulders shaking more and more. But then he started laughing as though he were having a coffee fit. I remember your proposal from eight years ago. It was immature in many ways, but it clearly expressed your nature as a human being. You have the courage to face great hardships. This in itself is a wonderful thing. But it's been eight years. Should you give up and learn that there are situations for which nothing can be done? I took down Avalon, you know. More accurately, we did. So you think what is happening here right now is merely a continuation of this story, scale-wise? As far as I'm concerned, the only option you have left is to open the valve at the Central Bank. Martin had prepared his plan for the past two years. He must have envisioned every single possible outcome exhaustively, as well as what people would do in each given situation. Indeed, the decision was handed down one hour ago. And you even ignore the trap of currency options. At first, that's how it sounded. But when quartered, you have to use whatever means you have. We just have to print enough money to cover for the losses incurred by currency options. So we are about to embark on a bet on whether or not the bull will depreciate faster than the losses are absorbed. But... You mean to say things are different now? Yes. Such was my answer.
I am confident that we could avoid the depreciation of the rules, sustain the nearly collapsed Harold Brothers and Emerald Industries, and stabilize the real estate market, which is the root cause of all this, just like a bottomless pit. So you're saying you become Alexander to cut the group Gordian knot? Barton of all people is stepping back. Even Barton was convinced there was no way out. Yet, even in these market conditions, there was a way to overturn everything. Of course. For the first time, Barton looked straight at me. Which is why I came to make a deal with you. A deal? Exactly. This is something you have taught me, that if an investor is someone who aims for the best profit at the best timing, then now is precisely the moment I must bring this deal to you. Aren't you supplicating me? If this situation continues, the lunar surface will collapse. So you're asking me to not run away with the money, but to put it to good use? Certainly not. I still have enough backbone to learn from my forefathers. I resume my explanation. We are people of the lunar surface, misers who convert everything to money, which is why, since the lunar surface's problem is a monetary problem, all possible avenues have not been explored. Here, even the end of the world is a monetary problem, so all we have to do is convert everything to money. After exchanging a glance with Agana, who was next to me, I raised my head to glance at the large atrium visible from my seat. I could see a hotel at the lunar surface that was said to be of the highest grade in the world. What I saw there was not a mere construction. I saw the dreams of people, their hopes, or you could say, their broken dreams and despair. And... The feelings of people. We will convert people's feelings for the lunar surface into money. Threaten them, yelling, if you love the lunar surface, if you don't want to leave the lunar surface, then cough up enough money to accomplish that. Asshole. Urge them by saying, if you're an inhabitant of the lunar surface, then buy your dreams with money. Buy the memories you've made here with your money. Just like E.J. Rocheberg bought on both stairs, just like you bought on the lunar streets, we will pull a buyout on the inhabitants of the lunar surface. I don't see where you're headed with this, but... First of all, can't you see that this is unprecedented? A buyout? On the inhabitants of the lunar surface. Let us say that this was even possible. I doubt you would be able to build up the system for this in time. Do you know how hard the construction of the system was, even for trading mere electricity? When I say the situation is desperate, I mean it's because there's no time at all. No, there is no need for a new system. I mean, if you want to live there, then you pay what is necessary to that end. That is what taxes were originally supposed to be about, right? It's a deal. We need a tremendous amount of rules, enough to blow away the crisis of the lunar surface, and the central bank will be able to print it. However, if we print that many banknotes, the mole will depreciate and cause the demise of the lunar surface. So in order to prevent this, we have to collect money via taxes and maintain the value of the pool. And if people acknowledge that the lunar surface has that much value, then they will pay, even if taxes are imposed on them. Is it taxes? On the lunar surface? But if you did that... I do expect complaints of dissatisfaction to occur. But if they think the lunar surface is still better than Earth, then they will pay. And if we can prove that the books can be balanced, if we print banknotes, the mole's value won't collapse. Financial institutions will be able to inject enough capital to overcome this turmoil. This will allow the lunar surface to retain its attractiveness, which means companies will not withdraw themselves, people will come back, and things will go back to working fine. Of course, you might laugh at my idea for being idealistic. In truth, though, whether everything works out or ends in disaster relies solely on one premise. Pierced straight through Barton. How much people care for the lunar surface? Exactly. Or my following words were spoken as an investor. If compared to Earth, the lunar surface is just a little more attractive. Are people greedy enough to yearn and 
struggle to be the ones to acquire that profit. Also, I thought the steel mine actually had a chance of working out. I was convinced this was no life dream. Indeed, the government was currently completely locked down upon, looked down upon, called names, and had its hands full with you collecting a little more than the bare minimum of necessary taxes. Yet it was said that this was made the lunar surface so attractive. But everything came to maturity. Even a restaurant just after its opening would provide some extra service free of charge. Even if people were to come because of this, if you suddenly stop providing this extra service, we won't believe that customers would stop coming. People normally didn't think like that. And special places like the lunar surface were far less numerous than restaurants. Sagana who thought of that idea. She was born in a very poor country and her circumstances had pushed her people in exchange for money. I guess the political system was in shambles and nothing could be done. But this was a complete her tale on Earth, and it has been going on for millennia. At long last, the answer people found was called the Lunar City. I remember what Eleanor talked about. I remember the very reason why things such as ABS and CDO got popular. The lunar surface was a land that could that was the object of adoration for lunar, for Earth people. People who could not go there tried to involve themselves with it by investing, and this blew up to such huge proportions that it cost a real estate bubble. And people poured money in the holy grail created by Chris and her team, believing it was a cup that could take in an infinite amount of water. That was why a bubble occurred in regards to the demand, and people's greed grew with the same momentum. This was obvious from the sheer number of people who would not leave the Earth, and even meant being mere playthings of the horrible situation there, even in a political system that one did not like. Even in a land void of hopes, there were a lot of people who could not leave their homeland, which was exactly why they tried to have monetary ties with the lunar surface at the very least. The result was this bubble. So even if it was a fact that people did not want to die far away from their homeland, no matter how good they had on the surface. And even if that was why, so many were scrambling to be the first on the normal elevator back to Earth. This must not be the case for everyone. There must be people who decide to bury their bones here, or people who had made unforgettable memories here, people such as Hagana. Of course, one thing you rationally about that the best move here would be to count on some other guy to pay taxes in order to set the lunar surface you would just escape discreetly and observe the situation and take advantage of the outcome no matter what it was. Taking into account all my experiences up till now, of course I'd assume the lunar surface was full of people like that. That's because if you didn't act with that assumption in mind, you could take advantage of. Even so, we bore witness to cases such as Bull Stairs. People were not that selfish and not that foolish. Even when aware that would bring them a loss, that would not be equitable. It's easy. 
I shall take the seat as director of the Central Bank. With my name as one born on the lunar surface, a hero who has defeated evil, I will be able to make decisions that people might, that might be begrudged to others. I will be able to persuade people into accepting this as an investment for the future. By claiming this will be an investment of the lunar surface, by the people of the lunar surface, for the people of the lunar surface. Do you think it will work? An obvious worry, a sensible decision, an intuition that went beyond logic. The man called Bart Gladbison stared at me with all the strength he could muster. However, I had no intention of engaging with him. Whether it will work or not is not the problem. It was Sagano who spoke. We will keep going at it until it works, right? Agata then glanced at me. I was ridiculously happy that she remembered me saying that. Eight years ago, I would not trust people so readily. Without my experience of four years ago, I wouldn't have been able to put myself forward this much. I was by no means free from my past. But then, it must have been the same for everyone else. Then let me ask you one question. Barton spoke with a strained voice. What's that? What is your reason for coming to talk to me about this? Here and now, in terms of how much cash one person can move around freely, Barton was the richest man in the world. Didn't I tell you? I have a deal for you. What do you want? The account I gave you and all the money in it, and the withdrawal of all positions you hold on Emerald Industries. not express surprise and laughter at the same time, and for the first time displayed an expression of bewilderment. Are you insane, mister? Do you actually expect me to accept this proposal? You will. Without a doubt, you certainly will. Mister, I certainly do not dislike this, reckless dislike this recklessness of yours, or this daring plan of yours that you spoke of, unafraid of God. However, mister, only loss and gain can motivate me to act. Listen, with how uncertain the future is, the only thing you... I already brought this up to President Gazanika, and I have his approval. I spoke. The position as Secretary of the Min Ministry of Finance awaits you. What? Barton, taken aback, opened his mouth. I stood up straight before continuing. After all... Services, government, and parliament are places where companies wage war by proxy. If we were to use the government's immense funds to save financial institutions, the real estate market, and emerald industries, this would surely stir up something unbelievable. But we both know of one man who can move freely in this unbelievable world, and who even managed for a time to threaten emerald industries. This man was Barton Clemmeis. A man who had the king of pessimism himself wondering whether or not he was actually a mere human. Both investment and the lunar surface more than anyone. Whether the lunar surface will be able to remain an attractive playground will depend on the government's actions from now on. Just like you try to turn the tables on this crisis to ensure the lunar surface can keep up going. If you are so determined, don't you think there are other ways to accomplish that goal, Mr. Barton? As I thought about my next words, I couldn't prevent a smile from creeping on my face. How about you grow up? Words that Barton had told me. I may have had a smug look on my face, but frankly, who could blame me? Barton looked like he just had a heart attack and was clutching his heart, looking back at me in blank amazement. Even a man like him didn't fathom this possibility, no matter how hard he racked his brains. People don't behave like a mathematical formula. That was why the result of a goddess program could be overwritten. That was because in that realm, people such as me, Gazaniga, Sasha, Risa, Margo, Eleanor, and Chris, our names weren't there. And also because the act of one person trusting another, something very obvious for humans, is not taken into account in that realm. Are you telling me to put the rope around my neck? Martin uttered those words with difficulty. I answered. Don't they say capitalists will even sell the rope to hang themselves? Barton glared at me. The man that I feared, that I admired, was glaring at me. Even 
even though this deal, collecting taxes, had some measure of a chance of working out, I couldn't know in advance how much money we could get. Investors worldwide were fleeing from every market, and so the situation was similar to a shortage of capital liquidity. It was quite possible that they could not use their money even if they wanted to. So in order to increase the odds even a little, I want to sweep away any concern with land animal industries. Just by removing this problem, the amount of money we needed will drop significantly. If on top of that, Bart might join us, well, there would be no ally more reassuring than him. I meant to cut the Gordian knot. I would say such lukewarm words as two birds with one stone. said this in a low voice before laughing. Would this be the magic of compound interest? And sighing as if it had written resignation, he glanced round for a bit. Finally, his gaze returned to the table, and Barton scratched his head. So, my failure with Avalon was the first bad omen, huh? Then. As I took advantage of the momentum to ask for his confirmation, Barton laughed wryly and shrugged. I am weak to investments, but as you said, I do think that investment is about trumping the other's plans. In that case, I see your point. Deciding to manage a proper government on the lunar surface? Now, that's a chance to trump people's plans that you don't get every day. Besides... Besides... I'm not young anymore, you see. I've been thinking it's lonely being by myself. Saying this, Barton went clumsily. I might not never I might never win against him. His gesture just now made me think this. But in the end, relationships between people are probably an accumulation of such things. I'll accept your offer. How about your positions? I know. Please call your legal advisor. It's the firm that has that really good lawyer Sasha, right? I'm as whimsical as the market after all. Determining profits is the right call to make said this, sipping his coffee. At that instant, all the tension left my body and I slouched in my chair weakly. Bart laughed. I could not tell whether he was laughing at me for how I looked right now, or if he was laughing at himself for losing against me. I wanted to believe it was both. For some reason, that thought crossed my mind. Hal? Gana called on my name. She had me my tablet, so I guess she was getting me this time, Bart laughed out loud. You're the type to get head-packed, aren't you? I'm not good at anything besides investment. As I managed to give this answer, I called Gazanika's number. As I was about to make the call, Barton asked. You're the type who would, on his deathbed, give instructions for his position after his own death, right? As I listened to the ringtone, I looked at Barton and answered. No, that's not it. Barton looked at me expectantly, tilting his head. I'm the type who can't stop investing even when the world is about to come to an end. Barton laughed, and my call connected. I reported the course of events and asked 
system take steps so we can announce the project as soon as possible. In the meantime, Barton finished drinking his coffee and after looking bored for a moment, stood up from his chair. I wasn't yet done with my phone call, so I called out and rushed to stop him from leaving. But Barton paid no heed to me and pulled out his wallet, taking coins and banknotes from it. I nearly cried for a moment when I saw what he put on the table. We'll split the check. As evil parties. We'll have to see plenty of each other, even if we don't want to, so don't make that face. I held back the tears that were going up and looked up towards Barton. I'd been hurt badly because of him. At times, the thought of wanting to kill him crossed my mind. But if I hadn't met that person, I don't think I'd ever have become who I am now. Barton shrugged and laughed as he prepared to leave. He stopped walking for an instant, and it felt like he did it on purpose. I almost forgot. Since you'll be center stage for all this... Well, you know what that means. It might get made into another movie or something. That was so sudden that I could not answer, and Barton said this. I hope you'll at least let me decide the title. What do you have in mind? Barton looked back at me over his shoulder and had a grin on his face. The tale of a crazed economy junkie who even turned the end of the world into a business deal. In other words... World End Economica Even if the world came to an end, we certainly wouldn't get sloppy with our money counting. Well, see you, Hero of the Lunar Surface. That, Barton waved and promptly left. Left behind, I gazed at his back, sniffing before returning to my phone call in a hurry. The discussion ended soon after that. He wanted me to come to the government building. We had a lot of things left to do. Or rather, we would have to deal with even more things. As I ended my phone call, I gave the tale back to Nagana. She put it away and stood up promptly. There was no sentimentality, no afterbirth. But there was a feeling. Al? Yes. Magana held her right hand out to me. You're going, right? Yes. Untrodden Ground. The End of the World. This last part to be much longer than it actually was, but the whole Barton thing went by so fast. So in case you're wondering, I do not plan on going back through this once they supposedly make the translation uniform. And in case you're wondering what I'm talking about, that's the whole Risa, Lisa thing, Hal, Haru, and then just various other miscellaneous mistakes. So I know they wanted to go back to episode one and touch some things up, maybe even move into the engine from the second and third games.
these CGs are from the second game, in case you don't remember. That's Kevin Lath, in case you don't remember. Hopefully you remember that's Eleanor. That would be Reyna, who didn't make a lot of appearances this game. These are from the first game, in case you remember those. So I don't think the CGs are changing in any way, shape, or form, it's just some of the translation and engine aspects. Psycho Hell. So I don't know if these are the people who worked on all three games or what exactly. See the new team with Barton added into it. That should be Hal testifying before Parliament, even though he's probably the banker or whatever at that time. they're going exactly, since I assume Wallace is kind of stuck on the moon at that point. I'm Prince wore that costume that much. So I think she was wearing it in the church, but other times we see her, I think she's wearing a suit. There's Hal's Executioner dressed in white. They could work into fourth game once the next economic crap hits the fan. So overall this really does mirror the Wall Street thing. What's worse is that those taxes that were levied on the people probably went for bailouts. And they don't really tell you if the people actually got compensated for it because in real life the taxpayers got shafted hard. Golden parachutes were deployed all over the place. Some of the banks were real bastards in trying to repay that. 
they were ungrateful, <laughs> they didn't really change too many of their practices, they still lobbied like no tomorrow. So overall I'd say in real life nothing was learned, and I, like if you want to keep the game true to life, you'd have to make it so that they didn't learn a damn thing, which should be an easy sell, I'm afraid. So, I don't really know if I want to comment on this because this, let's just say for an idea for the fourth game, if I had to make a prediction on what economic thing we're going to hit next, it's potentially going to be a trade war of sorts. So we're talking about levies of tariffs, those types of things. And the thing is, for the moon to actually keep up, there's going to, have to be quite a bit of a time skip so they can actually develop some sort of industrial base or something. Because as is, they really only had glass. They don't really have much to trade with. So yeah, the whole economic thing there would require an overhaul, so maybe the writer will just walk away. Regardless, this concludes this visual novel, and now I can try to find something to play. Now, I don't actually have... I actually made a list of the things I wanted to do, it's just I'm not sure which one's going to be next. I'm kind of leaning towards doing a small project or two in between this and the next major one. Things that would change that would be the next Fata Morgana coming out early, which would be the prequel. Still no definite word on that one just yet could go back to Sunrider and actually record all those with the proper battle system and actually carrying over data, but I'm not sure how the interest is on that one because the third one was that bad. Not sure. There's going to be time to think, so we'll see what happens with the smaller visual novels I do between then and now. And real quick, I'll pull up CG mode. He never really amounted to anything. He just provided a little bit of background, I guess. Okay, so she does have the green sweater cardigan or whatever that's exactly supposed to be. When she came in to uh, make the deal in the first place. Because this is more of what I remember her wearing, to be completely honest. That's the scene with Maria when she tells you that she has that letter exonerating her. Wallace reveals his diagnosis, festivities, and then calamity. And keep in mind there are also variations of the different CGs here that I'm not clicking on to give you an example. So there's two hidden behind this one. It's, as a result, it's not like there's just 32 C. Actually, it's going to be an 8x8. So 64, there's actually even more than that, which is kind of impressive. Especially when you consider the price point of the game, which actually isn't trying to gouge you or anything, which is really refreshing. And then these are the post-game CGs. Those only do have one variant. And yeah, this one felt a little short. So... And just to state this, since this might come up, when I'm looking for visual novel projects, I'm not really interested in the whole romance angle. When I play these, I'm more for the adventure side, so be surprised if something comes up that has no romance in it whatsoever. Now granted this and Fauna Morgana may have some of you kind of expecting that. I'm not going to rule it out, but seriously don't be surprised if I say hell no to any dating sim type games. Like Sunwear is the closest I'm willing to get to those, and that's just because of the strategy system. But anyway, I'm done rambling off for now. Anything else will be resolved in the comment section, I guess. So I'll try to pay attention to you guys in case you have suggestions or something. Or 
otherwise, that's it for now. I'm the Hero of Light, thanks for watching, and goodbye.